Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in the demo for a mod called Ashes of Libertad in which I wanted to show you this basically at the time of this recording, the demo for the mod. In which we have a leader, provision gover Provisional Government of Acre, government unhappy with the status quo and the ruling party is the Provisional Government of Acre, which has some anti-Bolivarian propaganda. We have Funai, we've got Banana Bread and Theater. So I just wanted to try out this mod to see what it's like. Uh, we only have one country to play as, and uh, I'm not sure if we need to leave it on or off. Oh, let's leave it on, just to see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen. Apparently it's supposed to be some sort of apocalyptic mod, but I figured, why not try it? And it was also recommended in my Discord server, so I figured, why not? So, But yeah, this is Apocalypse. Brazil's dead. It looks like pretty much every nation that used to exist is dead. We have the Indian uh, Union over here with the FARC. And we begin. Wow. Holy crap. It's the country of Serengleros. Or the militia army. Also, let's see, we have music here. Uh, cool. It is very soft. Alright, let's begin. How far, how do we get here? ACR, intro, one desk. Uh, wow. We really don't have much here, do we? Uh, let's go with research speed as well. Um, there's only, like, I think, up to five to seven years worth of content. Also, we're using the state transfer tool mod as well as play with peace conferences, but... Whoa. Yeah, five to seven years worth of content, so I don't know how it's going to end up, so hopefully it goes really well. Really well. Rio de Branco. Okay, cool. Jose Guillemar dos Santos. He does not learn very much. He seems very angry, though. Um, I guess we try to build a uh, civvy, and then maybe a milli, and then maybe another civvy, followed by another milli, and then by another milli. Roads don't really don't, don't do much for us, but we can build them because we can. How else do we have? Handmade guns, and it provides guns and equipment. Kind of cool. Transport planes not really worth it, probably, so we'll go with that. Um, ships, I guess we got some convoys before we continue or unpause it. Nothing here. It's 1967. I should probably should have looked at the mod a little bit more before I uh, started recording this. Oh, looks like they got some uh, recon companies. That are, these are exactly the same. Well, not exactly, but like, you know, they have recon, cavalry, and militia de terra. All right, well, we can train maybe two. See what that's like. And uh, I guess here we go. We got social policies, we've got economic policies, national trade scope. Cornered in Cusco, the ELN's last end. And also the time screen for this demo mod, which I'll try to link in the description below. Um Oh wow. Uh, this mod only features like this feels like medieval Total War Medieval 2. Like, oh my goodness, Cuba's destroyed. New Havana sounds really cool though. Senor Casa. Um, but yeah, it's a very limited map. Like, you don't even have... I guess you do have all of South America, though. How do we have the Argentine Republic still here? Vice President and President. That's kind of cool. And then Chilean Republic. Alanda. So, okay. Well, on the eve of the 19th century, the revolutionary ideals of France and the liberal optimism of the U.S. made their way into the dark depths of the Bolivian jungle. Giving birth to the First Republic of Acre. Based on surprisingly modern ideas for such a backwards place and time, nonetheless, a lot of such revolution will be quickly and repeatedly snuffed out. First by the Bolivians, then Brazilians, and three more times the Republic would rise just to be stomped back into a historical footnote in the history of Latin American republics. But even after its visionary leaders are all long dead and buried and his flag still and reappropriated, the ideals created by this footnote lives on in this day in the minds of the educated folk. In 1962, the world would be brought to its knees and in the process, tyranny would come again to the Rio Branco. Ironically, through the same fire responsible for ending the mighty republics of France and America, also rekindle the fires of the revolution in the deep secluded Brazilian jungle. A lot that won't be stumped out easily. The first step of the republic. Followed up with the life of a tapper. Look how fast this mod moves. Oh, I love it so much. Oh, speed like the drug. The republic reborn. In 1962, the federal troops marched on the streets of Brasilia, announcing the army coup. While some resisted and still resist to this day the state of Acre, elevated to a state from the federal territory just one year prior, was quickly overwhelmed by the local junta loyal garrison of the 4th Frontier Battalion, who sieged Rio Branco Palace until then Governor Jose Augusto de Araujo surrendered peacefully to the federal troops, passing the title of governor to Edgar Serquira and being taken to Brasilia to await judgment in prison, however. As conflicts against Republican forces escalated into open civil war, Acre's military occupation by the Amazonian Military Command came to an abrupt end when the occupation force was recalled from the state to serve more actively in the war, leaving the rebellious state essentially independent but also very, very vulnerable. As soon as the Brazilian troops left danger, uh, or left, danger came from Bolivia once again as Che Guevara's 
ragtag of guerrilla fighters pushed north into Brazil, being bravely and miraculously stopped in Brasileira by a combined force of civilian militias and former Fourth Frontier Battalion in the wake of such a victory. Ecuadorian nationalism was catapulted back into the mainstream. Edgar's military government became more and more a suggestion. Then, as his rules or then rule as his forces were now outnumbered and outgunned by victorious proud militia men, and seeing themselves abandoned by the Brazilian government and with a renewed sense of national pride, Edgar declared its formal independence from Brazil, taking its first step towards becoming America's newest republic. The first step is usually the hardest one. So we have Senate of Acre, okay? There are 23 seats, and no one holds seats, okay. And then we have rubber trade, buy steel, oh, okay. And we have quarry decisions, oh, I guess we don't. The wide liquid of life. Latex is the blood of uh, the, for, of the Republic for a millennia before the arrival of the Europeans. Natives would turn it, it into balls for the children to play or use it for basic repairs and tool making in the 19th century. This industry boomed as vehicles and machines in Europe and the U.S. now required rubber to function, bringing much wealth to those who sold it and much suffering for those who to harvest it. As expected, the Republic's economy isn't an industrial one. Far from it. Instead, Acre's economy is entirely dependent on the renewed rubber trade, which, while profitable, especially after complete collapse of the production of the synthetic rubber in Europe and the U.S., is also a very, very exploitative job. Tappers are constantly being exposed to every danger the jungle can offer, from disease to wild animals often away from the white city centers, uh, where medical help can be offered if ever needed. Wages are low and life conditions even worse, not to mention the impact these rubber plantations have on nature and na the native communities that cover much of Acre's territory. These inhumane conditions are fundamentally against the original beliefs of the Republic, but we are still dependent on trade with the Manaus, and we want to prosper and grow in power and relevance. Time will tell if the ideals of old will be upheld or forgotten when faced with reality. The Elastic and Robbery Reality of Life. The Red Menace. Alright, we may do the Red Menace maybe. With all senators united in Rio Branco working on the Constitution has begun, while the ideals of the original Acre Republic are highly regarded amongst all, and the old laws imposed by the Brazilian government are still used as a basis, this is a time of great change and radical unexpected reforms that could end, it, end up being put in place, if so desired by senators. The 22 senators here, united, come from all parts of Acre and are somewhere even beyond his borders, and as a result, no one has any strong relationship with anyone else mixed that with the fact that Acre doesn't have a strong political history makes sense. Or make so, there are no existing parties those senators can affiliate themselves with. Instead, new parties are being created as a constitution is written and senators get to meet each other, grouping into three groups like like-minded individuals, the nationalists, who value the original values of the republic, and are united by a strong sense of national pride. The militarists, many ma mainly members of the former fourth Bata Frontier Battalion were militia members bitter from the attack from the Che Guerra, who believed the only way to save Acre's sovereignty is by turning uh, into a true fighting force capable of defending itself. And the technocrats, a loose group of intellectuals, poets, artists, and social activists coming from the lower level of society. While some brand them as communists, they advocate for better, more humane work conditions for tappers and much needed social reforms. Once the constitution is signed, an indirect election will take place where the senators will vote for one of them to become president. The candidate of the party with most seats will be granted the honor to become the first president of the Acre Republic, finally ending the period of a provisional government. Let the work begin. Uh, the Senate of the Rio Bronco. The days following the withdrawal of federal troops from Acre were days of chaos and desperation. Acre's authority broke down as people organized into militias for and against Che Guevara's imminent invasion. Fighting between the Sinalicus Tapper militias led by Wilson de Souza and the former 4th Frontier Battalion broke out in the streets of Zapuri. And once the main attacking force from the Red Army came, intense resistance was made on Brasilia and Rio Bronco, ultimately repelling Che's forces and saving Acre from a fate akin to Rondania's and a glorious, although costly, victory. Wilson was banished from Acre, and the Republic was consolidated, and Che Guevara went back to Bolivia to lick his wounds. A tense peace now exists, another attack in the near future it seems eminent, and Che's forces grow stronger by the day. We all wait and pray for what, when the day comes, we're able to beat them back once again. Now, ain't I right? Um, Peru. Uh-huh. Okay. Armed forces. Just looking at who we have around here. Deep campaign. It all seems so close on the map, but the hired guide had stated before the journey started that it could take up to three weeks to reach a destination. Candidate Curry would have considered it canceling it. A handful of votes from some godforsaken village on the Peruvian border were not worth the time wasted, but he simply didn't have the heart to tell his thoughts to the crew in charge of this presidential campaign or Calume, the man in charge of his safety. With a smile on his face, a nice black suit with a bright yellow tie, and a covered head to toe in sweat and mosquito bites, he disembarked in Thaumaturgo, being received by no one? Curry started his political routine, shaking hands with the passerbys in the minuscule port and spitting propaganda of the Nationalist Party, uh, which he headed. The interest of the fisherman's face was equal to that of the dead fishes, but he had gone too far to go back, with his hands empty. 
He struggled to maintain his nice persona as curious looks from the f local fishermen, hit him one after the other alongside some comments in Spanish. Have they gone too far? The maps were old. They could have entered Peru by going too far up the Juara River. In the best imitation in Spanish that Calume could muster, he asked to know just where the heck they were, turning pale when they heard the answer, Estamos en Brazil. Shay's territory, the chief of security short of tackled Curry along with the rest of the crew in the back of the boat, forcing him to swallow his carefully crafted speeches, leaving a trail of pamphlets floating in the muddy waters as they fled. As it turned out, the small settlement had just learned of Acres Republic's existence, and never learned that the territory changed hands from Brazil in 1963, nor Bra Bolivia in 03. Never even noticed the end of the world in 62. News travels slowly in the jungle. The Senate. Oh, crap, we gotta choose someone here? We get more data with political power and, ooh, army XP. Edgar C. Dude. Oh, we get more daily army XP anyways. Militarists. We do have a cup of coffee here, too. We shall fight in the cities. Traditional army doctrine. Guerrilla warfare. Well, what do we have here? No, not that one. Um. Hmm. Del Norte. Oh, Del Norte. Where the heck is that? Oh. Oh, they're below us. Oh. Okay, then. Well, whatever way we go, I don't know if that's going to be the right way. So we have Provisional Government, Tecnocratas, Militaristas, Nacionalistas, and Sequeiras Clique. Uh, I don't know who to choose. 1967 Constitution, okay. No rest for the sick. Right to vote. It's five years. That's how long it took for us to get to this point. Egg is constituted of 22 communities big enough to be called cities. Five years is how long it took us to reach out to them. Ensure the loyalty to the Republican and have them choose a representative serve in the Senate. That's a ridiculously long time is due to multiple factors, be it the distance between settlements, the lack of infrastructure connecting them, difficulties convincing them to adopt the new ideas of an independent acre, and the incompetent bureaucracy of a young and inexperienced government. Now that they're finally here, united in Rio Bronco, and ready to start to work on the 1967 Constitution. The piece of paper that will serve as a basis for government for years to come, only left thing left to do is to decide who will give the opening speech for the ceremony. Let's hope things move more quickly from now on. Let's listen to utopianism. Although Marquis, the leader and figurehead of the technocrat party, surprisingly enough, he's illiterate. Coming from a poor carpenter family on the Sierra, most of his child was spent helping his parents in the latex fields, and didn't have enough time to get a proper education. And Aeneas, his right-hand man and best friend, now spends time and helps him by giving him writing lessons while also debating new courses of action from the government and his policies sometimes. They both get into arguments about it, but Aeneas makes him see his points one way or another and both get along. He misses his life before the Great War, of how he was robbed from almost getting his medical license and other opportunities, but with Marquis trying his best and others around him wanting to learn from him, it's one of the things that keeps him going. Mistakes are made, yes, but while alive, he can make amends. Like Aristotle, Aristotle's to his disciples. Aristotle's. Aristotle's. Separate, separate us from the savages. All men are born equal, huh? Um, I don't know. A velvet glove. Educated guesses. Censorship? Anti-censorship. Uh, national status quo. Militarists. I don't want to go with this guy because he get negative stuff. I don't want to lose political power every day. It's revolutionary? Um... Oh, revolutionary reaction. Oh, technocrats. Uh, fight in the jungles. I kind of like a traditional army doctrine, but even the guerrilla warfare. I mean, that sounds like asymmetric. Traditional sounds like grind battle pencil. Maybe we'll go fight in the cities, maybe. Denouncing intransignantly the cowardice and un blind unawareness of Acrian pacifists and appeasers by the military cabinet desk. And this temp tempestuous ephemeral and troubled world to which we are bound physically and spiritually. The man of action sees far beyond anyone around him, and while comprehending his standing out geniality among his comic book, doesn't know any traits of arrogant contempt towards him. Rather, he diverts all his energies towards guiding all who haven't a share of the same trait, and at the same time working together with others who partake such spark. That quote attributed to an unknown sage. Fragment of old wisdom found one day in casual reading sessions in the first year of the Agulas Negras Military Academy, reverberating deep inside the soul of General Edgar Sequeira. Kiera, way long before reaching his current military rank, displaying on the epaulets pads by five shining silver stars below the emblem of the Acrian National Army. Now its words were surfaced far more often since he decided to establish his military faction outside the military officer circles, courting like-minded politicians to his side so as to build up a political capital, increasing his political leverage as well and delivering a few speeches to select crowds of first-order militaries in a fierce rhetoric, proffering harsh words against what he understood as per perilous behavior 
pattern of political inertia because either of profound lack of interest or outright criminal collaboration with alien elements to address so-called draconian measures regarding mainly conscription and military funding that hampered significantly every effort to bolster the meager military apparatus left behind after the Brazilian collapse. Phase 1, become president. Huh? Address the militias, I guess. Danger saviors. Acting as independent defense forces, many militias still roam the countryside, vowing to protect citizens from the Red Menace of the South. Still, such unregulated fighting forces prone to making unfortunate accidents like shooting civilians accidentally, and occasionally leaving entire villages or declaring innocent people enemies of the state and common sympathizers. They have been organized, or had to be organized, into disciplined fighting force and fast before things spiral out of control, and the first step in doing so is regulating recruitment. Organize the militias, but keep them divided. When your draft, huh? To your draft. We need more men in our army. That hurts our organization by quite a bit. Hmm. This really hurts us badly. Standing army. Well, I guess we'll go to the Nationals then. Because we get slightly more pop. But it's not slightly more population. You, you use more political power and stuff like that too. But I guess we'll go with the Nationalists. I guess. Let's go with this guy. Point Elio Curry. I guess if we have to go some direction, we'll go with that one. Whatever. Rubber trade? A lot of oil and blood? Why not? Oh boy. While rubber is life and blood of the Republic, there are those who oppose its trade, but be it because of moral or practical reasons, or all manos. Maybe the biggest rubber export out there, we are the ones who produce most of it. It's an immense amount of political leverage that, if used properly, can determine whether we'll thrive or perish in this new world. Well, I guess we're going to go with the Nationalists, so... A Velvet Glove. Strong words ordered. A Fist of Iron. Well, that sounds more militarous. A Nationalist doesn't mean, might, might still use a Velvet Glove. I'm not sure what you want to do, so let's go. Mm, educated? Censorship. I don't know. I'll try it out. Buy technology. Huh. Remove some rubber and get some high technology. Okay. This has been assembled this morning to discuss the education and schooling budget of the Acre Republic. The Nationalist members have proposed an education program to promote nationals and patriotism and instill a sense of pride in their youth. And building a national summer academy to train individuals to become better patriots. Meanwhile, the technocrats have discussed granting significant funds to scientific departments and hopes to pave the way for new minds of scientific thinkers. Power to Senate? Oh, of course, there's Palpatine here. Oh, who is the Senate? The Senate's been convened today to talk about the power of its own institution in reflection to the next president, and thus future the executive and legislative branches of the government. Many of the nationals can't want to create a sim sim similar to the old American Senate, while well, measures want to essentially pass a bill of enormous demands that place most of the power into the president. Alternative to those two is the technocrats who want to place the institution as sent similarly to reflect the Soviet party politics of bygone days. Who shall win the debate as the military strong arm the others, the idealistic nationals melt hearts, and the technocrats just scheme in the corner? Right to vote? People's general. Hmm. The traitor general. Go we'll that one. Well, and involvement in the army and the polit into politics. Never w there was an issue before, right? An unusual question has popped up. Members of the militarists have begun protesting that the army personnel should have more authority over the civilian government. A civilian should only be allowed to own land or serve in the Senate, if having done military service in the past. Although not favored by many of those ideas appealing to some, especially Edgar's supporter, and have a great chance of passing. Absurd. Absurd. Separate us from the savages? Well, we're status quo. We're nationalists. Or, yeah. All men are born equal? Let people speak. Control the press. Well... We did go with above a glove. Needs of industry, rights of man. I think we would go all born equal. So we can get them in our, in our military, probably. Go and train too if you can. Alright, and then. Oh, Nueva Castilla. That's kind of cool. Dogs of equality won the Senate. And while some argue that complete integration in, of the natives could cause a disturbance of the traditional way of life, an uh, exposition to unnecessary evils, it was ultimately decided that all men are equal in, even inside the Republic. Independent of color, language, and birthplace. However, they even said the Senate racism or racism against Native Americans is very much present. And the question now is if those ideals of equality should be forced and indoctrinated into the people's mindset or enforced by law. 
enforce equality, wanting them or not. The government has no right to decide what we think is right. Ooh, well, we're going to go to the nationalists. Daily seg state segregation? Let the people speak? Oh, let people speak. They don't want segregation. They can, ha not, they can talk about it, but nothing more than that. We can't stop the press. Our nation was founded in the mold of the liberal democracy, the same as the once mighty U.S. of A. And as such, we cannot allow ourselves to do as they uh, do such tyranny as to suppress people's right to speak and protest, even if against us from time to time, such as freedom of speech, which shall be guaranteed right inside our borders. The question is, how free should this freedom be? Free press. Oh god, we're going to lose more political power? That's not cool. Uh, oh, look at this one. Ooh. Forbid the more dangerous or delicate subjects, but allow freedom of speech. Stability and research speed, but... You lose encryption and decryption. Oh. Yeah, I'll go with that one. Rights of man, the needs of industry. We're still nationalists here. Not that crazy, but we're still nationalists. Alright. Oh, second battle of Guanabara. Nice. Oh, hello. what did I click on? Whoa. Whoa. Can a change be too radical? Probably. The elephant in the room, where workers rise, heated the debate between the technocrats and the rest, uh, eventually culminated into a victory for the plantation elites and to a degree downright sociopaths, going against the 1888. Aurelia law that abolished slavery in Brazil, a minority favors radical reforms that would allow landowners to essentially own workers as servants for, for minimal wages, a new form of serfdom akin to what can be seen in Manuas' unregulated rubber plantations. Few favor such radical reforms that distance themselves so much from our libertarian ideals, but maybe some men shouldn't be so free as others. If that's for the betterment of the state, the question now is how far should we go? F. Isabel, this is Acre. Wow. Got two seats to them. Uh, it's very similar. This is Acre. The right to vote. People deserve the right to vote. Depends on who they are. <clears throat> in the old times, the right to vote uh, wasn't a right, but a privilege. It was common to limit their vote to, to right. The right to vote to, to a variety of restrictions, like being a landowner, having superior education, having served in the military, your race or gender. In the Senate, uh, this discussion has exploded with parties arguing not only with each other but with the, the, within each party themselves. Uh, the technocrats are divided between the socialist majority that agree with the nationalists and argue that the right to vote should be universal and an intellectual minority. That argues that only people of superior intellect and academic praise should be able to choose their leaders of even taking part in politics. The nationalists argue that the right should be universal, divided among the lines of gender. Internal discussion is happening, however, on whether to consider the will of uncivilized natives and how such a thing should be even accomplished. The milit militarists seem to be most united. A soft core minority, for sure, argues that it should be divided along the lines of race and gender, with only one male members of the military or landowners being allowed to vote. The hardcore members, mostly sheltering under uh, Sir Kerea's leadership, Argue that only active members of the armed forces should be able to vote, regardless of gender, race, or social situation. Situations are quickly escalating as the different ideologies clash against each other, worse than ever before. No matter what the final vote leads to, the decision will consolidate the members' goals and ideologies and existences of the three parties for the years to come. Yay. Oh, wow. Would you look at that? The Nationals hold 18 seats. The question of mobilization. The militarists once again clash with against its opposition. It's time for the question of mobilization. They argue that the constant state of danger the nation finds itself in is a reason enough to include. Or in a state of permanent state of war. Mobilization. Meanwhile, others argue that such resources should be better distributed among social forms and consumer goods. Our neutrality. Independencia o morta. I guess right, we should isolate ourselves. Well, 20 seats now. Oh, there goes Cuba. And sign on the Constitution, which we got a couple days for that. Oh, four divisions, nice. Not too bad. And we're still building ourselves up. It's already June, wow. <clears throat> All right, Curry elected as the first president of Acre. Yeah, I'm in a smile. Oh, the signing of the Acarian, Acarian Constitution, nearly two dozen of the Senate's previously empty seats have been filled with it. A vote within the chamber has been held to elect the nation's first president. Helio Curry, leader of the Nationalist Party, despite how the word nationalist might conjure up thoughts of ethnic supremacists, imperialists, and conquerors, Curry is far from being described by any of those terms. This nationalism is a belief of an independence of the acres of free and democratic state and the preservation of such an as opposed to the reintegration with Brazil. Curry has promised economic reforms and holds an especially high level of support amongst the indigenous people whose rights he has argued for consistently. In terms of foreign policy, Curry is supportive of a more diplomatic and peaceful approach to neighboring statelets, the Republic Dons. 
Oh, oh wow, well, look at all this. Oh, wow. The once, the great Oka University began construction. The University of Rio de Bronco, Rio Bronco. I guess we do that one. Or the capital? They done the grain work. Oh, okay. Um, gather engineers, I guess. We'll get more stability that way too, that's kind of nice. The Curry Presidency. Alright. Glancing into the militias. Oh, look at that one. With the drafting and signing of the new Akkarian Constitution of 1967, near nearly two dozen of the Senate's previously empty seats have been filled as choice and amendment passed and powered its, with its opposing faction. With an awful Senate Constitution enacted, a vote within the chamber has been elected or held to elect the nation's president for the next four years. The victor is Helio Curry, a member of the Nationalist Party. Despite how the word nationalist might conjure up to the thoughts of ethnic supremacists and blah 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 blah, blah and warmongers and militarists, Curry is far from being described by any of those terms. Um, I've already read this part, so. Uh, Curry holding a strong presence of the Senate has promised economic reforms and overhaul the Republic's infrastructure, making him popular amongst the average Aquian across socio-economic lines, and holds an especially high level of support, of course, against amongst the indigenous people, whose rights he has argued for consistently. In terms of foreign policy, Curry is supportive of a more diplomatic and peaceful approach to the neighboring states, especially in relation to the natives. The sun rises over Curry. Uh, over us, too. Alright, meeting our neighbors. Reduce or regulate tapper regulations. A common home. Argentina faces resistance to the Maldives. Uh huh. Well, uh, naval infrastructure is nice and all, but building a worthy capital? No, you idiot. That's not how you hold a rifle. Toguchi Hayobi, one of the very few Japanese immigrants who have arrived in the Amazon, especially Acre, was angry at his soldiers. His past in the Shindo Remnai meant he was an invaluable asset to figuring how to make a militia function. Regardless, his subordinates here seem to be more interested in making jokes about women than figuring out how to have a military discipline. All right, guys, I need you to sit up and look at me now. A sudden scream has scared everyone straight, and now, and some couldn't help but immediately try to apologize. Yes, sir, sorry, sir, and all that. Yeah, I did not convince Taguchi. He wanted proof that these men, they were ready to fight for their homeland, their town, and city. If you all feel so convinced about yourselves, why don't you look out from this base and see what's out and beyond? The commander demanded the attention of the entire corps and made them leave their barracks in Brasilia to trick out of the former Bolivian border, which is now extremely porous and filled to the brim with our ERN soldiers. Are we all ready to face that kind of assault? I fought communism in Brazil in my youth. I won't let any of you get off as soft as these guys, as those guys either. <clears throat> the corps seemed less cocky now. Some of the soldiers had already been completely low, and only a few elements were really questioning Taguchi's leadership. One soldier protested, why the heck are we in such a risky position? They could attack us any time. Taguchi flicked his fingers and snapped them, swift, smiling gently. <clears throat> exactly, soldier. We need to always be alert. If they ever touch even a centimeter of Akirian territory, then that's then when we know we'll have to do our duty. You're all paid for a reason. You all come here to rise above your social rank and fight for something in common, regardless of where you're from. We must defend our homeland from those who can destroy it under the auspices of evil governments. My homeland is no longer Japan, it's long gone, but that, regardless of where we're originally from, is not what defines us as Acreans. We're defined as people that love our national liberty. We will not allow anyone to tread that. The Corps is now ecstatic with great faith in the future as defenders of Acre. One done, so many more to go. Regulate Tapper Expansion. Oh boy, the Acre region has been a great area of rubber tapping activity since the second half of the 19th century. It lived through two rubber booms in the short space of a hundred years, and even though the second boom happened more than 20 years ago, most of Acre's economy still gravitates towards the recently revived rubber industry. Despite the economic importance of this industry to an extent that any Acrian could still say that inside his blood vessels flow a mix of red blood and white latex, still operates in a primitive fashion, notably in the absence of any kind of labor rights uh, legislation of the tappers. The abysmal social rift between the uh, Syringalistas and the tappers, whom work to the to the Seringlistas, and the permanent tying of the latter with the Serengals, where they work by a system of permanent debt. The Serengals are mostly privately owned, unreg unregulated rubber production plants composed by the central building called Barakayo, the shed, or Barasao, uh, where everything that the tappers cannot produce by themselves is put on sale, and all the rubber they produce is sold. Colo Cacaos, or locations, and Area assigned for the tappers to build improvised shacks to live with the families while working in Serengal. Estradas de Seringa, the rubber tree spots, obviously the place of the previous intoxic latex. For last but not least important, O de Fumador, the smoker, who, whose function is to fume the latex until it turns into pelas de boraca, thick rubber balls. Hilo, Helio, has, as one of the first presidential acts, plans to draft the first regulation code of the rubber tapping industry ever made in order to ensure the better working conditions are achieved but foremost. Besides drafting the code, is that he'll need some common ground? Find common ground with the factions of the Acre National Congress to compromise with them and pass the legislation. Challenging test. Crap! Compromise the technical test. Oh, why'd I go down this route? You know what? Screw it. We're gonna go down the route. Give me the radar stations first. Legal sold on the Rio de Janeiro. Huh. Bring in light. Restore public buildings. Yes. And then, uh, fix the road. 
or just well, it says road, but I guess just road. Revive the square. We'll grant one seat to the militarists. Um, revive the Gamelaria, Gamelaria Street. We do the radio one. Casas Aviadoras. There's a lot of people killing each other. Revive the casinos. Oh yes. Oh, gonna hurt populations though. Oh, well, we're out anyways. So I guess it won't really hurt that badly. Connect the cities. Okay. Why not? As I've just finished up the coffee too. Buy technology. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> revive Beirut Square. Uh, well, we have plenty of senators right now, right? Twenty. So. Reeve map the rivers. Okay. Did we lose? Did we lose the center? We did lose. That four mil militaries have four seats. Acre United. We're attacking defensive core territory. Nice. Compromise the technocrats. We might as well next, I guess. My bad, guys. I actually hit uh, something with my water bottle, so. It is what it is. We have seven divisions. That's actually not bad at all. Compromise with the technocrats inside the halls and corridors of the Acre National Congress, the ANC. Not an African National Congress, but. Besides their natural, natural supporters, there are two other political factions with their own ideas how to improve and reform Acre. The technocrats and militarists. The minimum legislative quorum required a constitution to ratify any new laws or acts is two-thirds plus one of the voting deputies in the national legislative. Therefore, even with the full vote commitment of our party deputies, counting partial support from other factions, is necessary to obtain enough votes for the passage of the jur judicial code known officially as the Rubber International or Rubber Industry Organic Regulation Act and formally as the Curia First National Reform Act. Court. Them successfully, we need to exceed some of their immediate demands. The so called technocracy bloc, headed by the diarchy of Marquis de Souza and Eneas Carneiro, usually has a more friendly, albeit a paternalistic, approach towards the auto. auto stone tribes in Acre and his mass support in the working class sectors of the most te technical educated circles of Acre in society want the inclusion of a law prohibiting the Carreras hit and run skirmishes against indigenous populations with the objective of clearing resource rich sites to facilitate their immediate or future extraction. They also want the inclusion of a special kind of welfare net to alleviate the most poverty stricken parts of the Acre population. A more aggressive regulation and supervision of the working conditions than said the certain guys, based on the majority of, the, of our rubber production. We cannot afford to accede all these demands, but a harsh legislation prohibiting the Correas can be fitted inside the act without much comp complaint from our own deputies and is enough to appease the majority of the technocrats. Tappers are Kyrians, too. I guess? Why not? And the Correas. Okay. More responsibility is nice. Future uncertain, huh? Just like me. Future uncertain. Inside the halls and quarters of the ANC, besides their natural naturalist uh, uh, sports, two other political factions. Um. Well, if you want to about that, go right ahead. Let's see. The militaries are headed by General Edgar Serkira. Political body and voice of our most prominent military officials are not exactly the most committed Democrats in the country. And to be honest, democracy is seen more as a nuisance to the majority of them as it hampers the creation of a great, prepared, equipped, and well oiled military apparatus in case Che Guevara tries to invade again. They want the hardening of both the stance and the approach towards those rallies as potential hotbeds for the spreading of more radical ideas done directly or indirectly by Guevara's agents and sympathizers infiltrated inside our nation and see these same agitators I could act as a fifth column inside Acre or even try to topple the government if they gather the support of enough disgruntled Acreans. As demands put forth by the military's clique are a huge raise in the budget de designated to the armed forces, an enactment of total mobilization gearing all of our resources to war preparations. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we do not have enough spare political capital to fulfill all their demands, but surely the request for the outlawing of political rallies and trade union strikes, military intervention to outlaw ra rallies and gatherings, the restriction of the people gathered to certain schedules subordinated, to prior consent of the government and banishment of suspected Gervist organizations can be implemented without hurting our ideals and our commitments to keeping democracy too much, well, plus we can count with many other militarist votes. Hmm. Uh. How can we do this yet? Ah, eh, we have enough anyways. Okay. Well, fortunate, so fortunate soldier act. Grant one seat to the to the highest bidder. Okay. National protection act. Um. 
To the highest bidder, where's that? Oh, it's over here. Okay, mercenary decisions. Interesting. We get more daily army XP. I like that. No. Okay. Well, let's do this one then. Oh, what happened there? Interesting. Hmm. Oh, it's just article bit, okay. Lawful militias? Sure, why not? Manuas under siege, huh? Buy steel. Do we need anything else here? No, we're pretty good right now. Maybe get some motor parts? No? Oh, we can't do that one, huh? Oh. Menus, huh? Okay, if you want to put that, please go ahead. Mercenaries. Oh, crap. Whoa! Place order allow resistance crap. Interesting. I'll go to these guys. A combo with homemade guns. Oh god. Grabbing the pair of militaries. Okay. Um, after that, let's keep going down with this thing. Intervene in the Tapa rallies. Protest reached Rio Bronco. <clears throat> Might as well, right? Compromise with the Tappers as well. Remove Tapa protest. Get more output, more stability. Okay. Well. It is what it is, but Farmland's War. Happy 1968, everybody. Hope you're having a great, great year. Rio Branco. <clears throat> that was a very early morning, another day in the Serengeti Goldias Branco, named after one, it, it, one of its first owners, where dozens of workers toiled hard in their workstations to extract the white blood of the rubber of trees known as latex, transporting fume of latex into a defumigator. Until it turned into thick balls, commonly known as the Pelas de Boraca, and then ferried them to be sold in the shed. Suddenly, the tappers rose up, overcame the small private thugs, and, and hastily organized assembly. They cared unanimously to strike through until the government agreed to cave into their demands. As such, a revocation of the proposed uh, revocation of the proposed La Militar de Seguridad Nacional, called as La de Mordecai, by its detractors, and better working conditions or health care and living conditions, however. This happening wasn't limited only to that Serengals. The tappers of some Serengals nearby also went on a strike in a quite coordinated manner with the tappers seizing the properties entirely. Some sources affirm that the le new legislation related to curb any non-sanctioned rallies and drafted to appease the militarists. It was the main reason behind the strike, even though some military sources state that there is some evidence of a foreign backed or foreign backing, refusing however to name the suspected foreign backer. Oh crap. Uh Marquis you go online. The daily example of the Dario de the egg arrived at the Marquis de Souza's desk as soon as the first of the one was printed. He was an assiduous reader of the newspapers and knew many journalists. As expected, unfortunately, today's news weren't good and he kind of predicted that things wouldn't be so calm after La Militaire de Segura Nacional was endorsed by Curry himself. He quickly walked to the Palacio Rio Branco and asked for Curry. Uh, really must have hear my plan to solve this. Violent intervention can only do harm, thought Marquis while he went upstairs to meet Curry. His plan was very simple. Appeasing the tappers by caving into their demands was a way to solve everything without bloodshed. At least he hoped so. Listen to the people, Curry. Well, get some more reinforcement, I guess. Interesting. 19 so It's not bad. Can we replace... Oh, we, oh, we can just choose him. Oh, crap. We got him for free. Oh, whoops. Oh, crap. I prefer daily pickle pie and... Oh... Arm XP? Oh, are you kidding me? Daily pickle power again. That's really good. I want a little bit of both, though. Screw it. We'll spend the pickle power for that. Oh, okay. Never mind. Oh, you just have to choose them then. Oh, it was just free. Oh, we can get, choose. Oh, what the heck? I don't, my bad. I don't understand. The state segregation. I love segregation. Buying the votes in the Senate. Getting the reserves. Passing through heck. Oh. We did that one, laying down the groundwork. Okay. Begin construction. Yes, please. Well, let's do all stuff first. And the great Oka University. Nice. Same volunteers we really want to. East Wing expansion, West Wing. Well, I'll give that one, why not? We have bonus for engineers? We have a lot of engineers for support here. Art of thought. Art of war. 
Art War Academy, Plato's Cave. Oh, superior firepower down there. Oh, get a research slot. I get two research slots. Ooh, stability, research speed, or political power, stability. Wait, two and a half percent stability, or five percent stability over here. Education for all versus education for the elite. Plus one percent research speed. Plus five percent research speed. The elite's elite. And plus ten percent output. Okay, that's not bad. And you lose output though. Ooh, that's mmm. Research speed. I don't care about that much. I want more political power. We get we get one point six already every day. That's not bad. Research efficiency gain's not bad, but I don't want her output. We'll go education for all. Screw it. Tappers no more. Because I want that research slot. West Wing finalized. Nice. Art of Thought. Um, I do want to do more of this. Maybe we can do the militarists. Um, just because we need at least eight militarists and eight nationalist seats. Right? Well, we can, technically should be able to do that already, but we can't do it, so... Oh. Well, at least we have a third research slot, finally. Even more research would be pretty nice. I would have thought. Should we go... I want to go grand battle plan, if possible, really. Infantry weapons. Hard of thought. Plato's Cave. Nice. Research bonus. I'm not sure if bonus would be really helpful, though. Get even more of a daily political power and army XP. Nice. East Wing finalized? Why not? Oh, we did it. Mr. Canario's class. Yes. A fourth research slot. Lovely. Awesome. So, we're done with that tree. We're done with this tree. We got some of this tree to do. And buying boats in the Senate. Or meeting our neighbors. Let's meet our neighbors first. Oh, we don't get point eight. Oh. Oh, well. It was about lunchtime when Jose Bernardo da Silva, a retired and wealthy merchant, a man with many important connections within Manua's political circles, received a marked envelope. Normally, Jose would only read it after eating, however. That telegram was different than any of the others he saw before, not to mention the unusual hour to drive. That prompted him to open the telegram with no further ado. The message was clear and simple. Due to your deep connections with Manuas, our president impacted you as a formal ambassador to that city. Further instructions and information about your assignment are inside the package. Your departure to Manuas needs to be happening as soon as possible. The assessment of po positive or possible positive diplomatic relations with Manuas is urgent. Discretion isn't essential, but it may be helpful. Now that this package get out of your eyesight and burn this telegram before you leave to Manuas, it's imperative to protect your vital mission. Make sure an acre can get the best outcome of it. Do not be afraid, Patriot. Pro Ecra Fiant Examina. Oh, International Trace Club, yeah. Create a fluential discipline fleet. Oh, this is one first. Yeah. Alright, that's what it did. Wow, that's quite a while. What do we have here? Military Army still. Okay. Walker University. We hear our output quite a bit. Placido's Dream is not bad. Casinos are okay ish. A weekly stability goes up, which is awesome. And the Red Menace, of course. Okay, look at that. Hey. Keep making a lot of stuff for now. We're going to need some support equipment as well, so. Oh, we need the rubber crisis. Oh, crap. Um, naval research speed goes up, which is okay. Well, if we even do this one, then we can still make um, some other stuff, too. Get some naval update guns. Yay, they're gone. The rubber crisis. Ah, oh, crap. Crisis has come to the acre. With the government issuing several reports of hundreds upon hundreds of convoys carrying rubber, wood, and other materials being intercepted along the rivers, Perus, and, and Juara, by pirates that have been identified with insignias coming from the Amazonian city of Quarai. While those acts of robbery have been happening since the collapse of the federal authority over the Amazon, it has hit an alarming level where entire convoys are disappearing with their own crews alongside them, only to be found again half sunken in the shores of the river. The governor of Rio Branco has already emitted drastic measures to protect the precious cargo that is being carried to Manuas. Manuas and to protect the sediments under the protection of the Republic from attacks coming from Kauai. Armor protection boats are being prepared to go along to the convoys and patrols along the river being made with the entrance to Acre on the Paras River being blocked off by shore and river patrols, while there are rumors of a direct intervention into the city of Kauai negotiation attempts are being done. Mayor Montoriel hasn't said anything about those accusations yet and is expected to not take responsibility for them. None of this cause to war in the Senate grow louder each day as the Rio Bronco bleeds from the sudden stop of its most lucrative trade. God help us all. 
Oh, cr weekly stability. Oh my goodness. They're up a crisis. Close the door. Oh, you're all the way up here? We don't have whiskey, but we do have a pirate problem, sir. The merchant steam ship Velocino, the Aurora, was navigating the Pearls River steadily, its steam engine humming smoothly and almost silent as a rubber. The boat, commissioned as soon as it was launched from the Rio Bronco shipyards, proudly made part of the top class ships, built by the fledging newborn Ecuadorian fluvial navy merchant branch, Tathras restoring the life of blood or lifeline of Acre that relied upon the fluvial trade with other commercial partners, the main one being the city of Manuas. Indeed, Manaus was the first destination of the aforementioned ship loaded with the finest acreing goods, mainly wood, rubber, nuts, straw, tropical wood, and tropical wood handmade items that were to be exchanged for machine parts, tools, steel, and other material items that weren't locally available in Acre. The task of transporting goods up and down the river to two seasoned sailors seemed to be pretty dull and boring due to its mostly morose and uneventful trip, however. Amidst many of the vessels crew, predominantly Guerin and untested sailors that were present in the Merchant Navy service for a myriad of reasons, fears of real and imaginary perils that inhabited either the water or the surrounding riverbank's dense jungle forest. Interrupted only by a few uh, palafitas that served as housing for the stranded riberinos were often discussed among them loudly during the breaks and whispered during work shifts, keeping the sailors on high alert, which wouldn't prove helpful at all in the events to come. The events to come. Oh, still got enough rubber for now. Hope we got enough for the future too. But fires would be nice. Air reduction is okay. Well. We lose political power for 5% more research speed's okay, it's not great. It's a lot more stability. Daily political power, I want as much political power as possible. Why would we go with point 0.1? We can get plus point 0.15. Max planning goes up 2, that's pretty decent. Um, I would like daily political power as well as something else, but... A uh, new strange land. Guillomar, tasked with commanding the patrolling divisions that would enter Boko de Acre, didn't expect the way Kaititu would communicate the handing over the settlement territory. The tribes of the region, largely communicated by proxy and quiet, marked the new frontier of the two nations with sediments against the Peros River and subsequently leaving traps after the demarcation, denoted the impossibility of further concessions. Sam had slowly brought his regiment to enter the municipality, seeing the local population excitedly welcome the new overlords of the land, Zhao, one of the few residents that remained in Boko de Acre, after its abandonment in 63, was later interviewed by the but interviewed in Akernese television, seeing that the seizure of territory by the Acre Republic was an act of God, detailing further. Those strange people barely kept us with food, let alone electricity. As the religious finally reached civilization again, Guillomard set up a post along with his comrades in the town, requesting a meal for his hungry soldiers from the best kitchens in town. Good for Zhao and Guillomard, I suppose. Okay, the Manu Manaus Rio Bronco access. Oh! Crap. The Terra. So these guys will go and just kind of do that. And this one's okay for now. I want to convert a guy to actual infantry. So at least 18 count with it at the very minimum. Do you have anything here yet? No? Okay, that's fine. The events to come. The steamboat kept its uneventful course for most of the scheduled uh, itinerary when suddenly, while the ship crossed from the Pearls River to the Amazonas River, a squadron of pirates strategically ambushed it during the crossing. From all sides, it nullified any chance of an effective defense. Their presence was well conceived by the dense vegetation. These, however, were normal pirates, or captain acknowledged that very quickly their semi armored tugs, bearing the colors of the flag of Kaori, uh, everything carefully. Plan to catch us by surprise, not fruit of a random desire to amass wealth by some low-ranking officer, but part of the masterminded plan to harass our shipping lines through the captain. Thought the captain. You know the choice in surrendering the ship after a brief and hopeless fight being allowed, however, got together a few of the surviving crewmen to board a lifeboat with enough supplies to let them reach Manaus and relay the disastrous news to Rio Branco. Don you, Montori. We're gonna need some serious manpower here because we have like nothing. Serious force. Jungle wins elections. Okay. Um, two-year draft, traditional army doctrine. 
Uh, no, I army high command, huh? Oh, we can core this stuff. Okay, that'd be good. I was hoping there'd be something like that. That's actually really nice. After this one, oh, the Robocrest Flavor Fan 3. Okay. Oh, we just annexed them, but then they they're not they're not alive. Um, okay. And Acre Stagnation. Uh, the Manu Man Manawan Gun Market. Relations with Manaus. Well, they're dead now. I'm not sure what else we're supposed to do about that. Buying boats in the Senate. Create NATO reserves. Railroad to heaven. Ooh. Passing through heck. Sorry, this specific mechanic cannot be finished in time. A future office will bring war treatment mechanic. That sounds really cool. Okay, so you guys are over here. I guess we give them more equipment, I guess. Oh. Need more world tension. Need 30 divisions to send divisions over. So we can't even do any of that. Okay. Odd, but whatever. Court, please. Oh, we can buy motor parts, too. I'm not sure that does anything. It doesn't look like it gives it anything, though. Purchase mechan mechanization? Sure. What are we building up? Oh, we're building up roads. Okay, we need more than just roads. Um, go Millie's, too. Oh, nice. We got some support going finally. Good. Go with three. Sure, lower the cost because you can. Helio cares. Yes. More stability. Adam Maiocre Greci. Vana Pirates. Okay. Lower the cost of everything. All right. Newly made equipment. Got some more gun stuff too, just in case. Speedy machine's very nice. Got some more decryption. That'd help with combat. Um, anything else here? Not too much. This is more max plan. That'd be kind of nice. Some more daily army XP. So nice. Homeo path. Completed. Compromise of Kaori. Many weeks of traveling across the rivers of the unstoppable green heck that surrounded little beacons of civilization at the end of the world meant that Acrian military boats had gotten a toll on the mental health. While some were hopeful for the promises of medicine, especially to bring it over to the people of Acre that desperately needed it. As the days went on, eventually the flag of Quattro Provos das Misos could be found flying high on the port town of Camuda, brought about a wave of cheerfulness across the emaciated crew. With that, several priests, which they catch from the surrounding Apos, being recalled from the missions, continue to communicate with the QPM to gain their favor, and maybe get the promised medicine. After hours of conversation, it appears that along with several medically skilled priests, medication would finally be given. Once the boxes came to the boats, the excited cruisermen went happily back to Acre. Yeah, something still wrung in their bellies that this might not be a military-grade medication. Nonetheless, they continued on reaching several outposts such as Fonte Boa. They reached home in due time, surely, when it was the time to come to open the crates. Several men took crowbars and begun to take out the medication, some syringes sterile, some less so. Some scalpels, some of everything, but the main attraction, the main volume of the shipments, those little bottles of slightly bitter water that were all labeled different things. Once it was discovered what it was, the reaction was mixed, and so the debates over the nature of medicine begun. There's no way that water has memory. A deal with the devil. Davy Castos Fontes, considering a smooth and charming speaker in Rio Branco, quickly rose to the ranks of the fledgling republic and was eventually picked to begin talks with the municipality of Corai. Corai, eh? Okori, a non-aligned municipal government had trouble maintaining such formality due to the ad hoc and yet Byzantine nature of the municipality's governance. Regardless, Davi has created a large document using one of the finest typewriters in Acre <clears throat> uh, to propose a compromise with Karai, a Kori, in a way that would be slightly more beneficial to Acre, but still helpful for both parties to mitigate the effects of the rubber crisis. The document, long and boring, was delivered in the only way Kori will get it, by being put in a pretty fat boat specifically made so it would be stolen and delivered straight to Montorel. Now they accept if they accept it or not, it's a matter for further discussion. Let's hope for the best. The Coronis Soneth. I guess we'll see what happens. We have ten divisions here. We'll see. Of course we need core stuff, so we have a war going against oh. Mm. They're up here. 
How do we... Trophy wife, nice. White line devil. Wow. Weekly stability goes down by 50%. How is it at 85%? How do we even get over there? The devil replies. The response after uh, Davi's diligent work talking with Kauri's representative, it seemed that only one choice could be made. While Montoriel was quite open to talks, writing back an equally long document detailing Kauri's position and motivations, he remains quite resilient and will be difficult to make him give in to further negotiations. His position is that we should give some of our industrial resources to compensate for this trade deal, arguing that Kauri's harassment of acreage ships comes from civilian desperation. While many within our nation believe this to be nothing of short of treason, some believe that it is best to try and resolve the crisis as quickly as possible. Therefore, some options are on our table. Declare war and seize the resources and teach them a lesson about messing with us, take their offer, or finally walk out of the negotiations and go back to square zero or square one. What should you do, Mr. President? Huh. Let it make him repent. If that's what it takes, it, so be it. Get a civvy, okay. Mobile infantry? I mean, maybe we should still go to war with them? I don't know. Motorized defense and stuff like that? No, that's not bad. I almost get, try to get that too. No, mobile infantry is not bad. Um, Go two, maybe? I don't know. Should, should we go to war? I mean, we're not really super, 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 super aggressive. I just don't know how to get over there. And these guys are over there. Can we actually use you, you guys to get over there? No? I mean... I'm not sure we're supposed to do anything about that. In all honesty. Could you go with... Oh. Can't go to war with these guys either, so... I don't see the real point in doing so. I guess we do have a navy. How many ships do we have? Sometimes we click on... No, it's not... That's not... Do we have a navy? No, we don't have a navy. Oh. We're supposed to have a navy? I have a screenship from the... Screenship ship from the Acre Republic. Uh, yeah, we have no navy, so there's literally no way we can get over there, so... Yeah, I guess we chose the right way. And stagnation, which we did. Remember the rubber battle? I, I, I guess. We have 19 seats? Um, how many motor parts do we have? We have zero. That's not good. We need more steel now, though. Let's buy some steel. All right, the forgotten Prasinhas. Prasinhas. Specialized warfare. If it don't, if it works, don't change it. That's true. Adapt and improvise. Oh, I'll read that one. Why not? Support weapons. Nice. Maybe even some more support weapons. No army high command. Nothing there. All right. So this stuff is done, that stuff is done. Buying boats in the Senate. Needs in the reserve. Well, buying boats in the Senate, I guess. I think we're doing okay so far. But a lot of civvies up. Kicking and screaming. The Lord Kalume has been sitting in the high command room, or the green room as it is known, for the thick fauna surrounding it, as it is intentionally secluded, but not too far from the Rio Bronco. The others continue to bicker for hours on end, spurned on by local snacks and drinks provided by generous housemaids. The green room, practically a treehouse, was filled with children that couldn't share toys. Kalume, looking to be the adult in the conversation, slammed the tables Jose Guillemar ate some potato chips. I've had it up here with us. We haven't gotten anything done. The room looked at Kalume with a raised eyebrow and continued. We need to figure out what is the right way to organize our army, or the effing communists will eat us alive. While well, we all snuck on candy chips. The room began to nod, and several members of the room in the command began pitching their ideas. Having set, laid them all out, the room agreed regarding that. The trucks will put a man in the forefront. Ooh. Hope I move one out. I like that one a lot. So how do we do this stuff? Why can't we do any of this? We have at least 19 of those guys. Maybe another male just would be good, but... New ideas, old political ways. Create reserve... Native reserves? Sitting at the negotiation table with the rival factions to co-op boats, unofficial talks free of blabbering or endless deadlock paramilitary debates. What seemed to be a swift and easy path through which Curry's ambitious reformist ideas, brand new to backward states such as Acre and yet to be evaluated outside of the planning sheets, could be transformed not only into official legislation but as effective government actions, however. The political atmosphere changed dramatically since those so-called Deas Bronco strike, whose outcome angered militants and technocrats alike as the proposals were turned down by Curry himself after heated arguments, in which the government decided to uh, surround striking Seringals. 
or certain guys. Start in the mountain of the submission. Curry's strategy worked as he never damaged his popular support, but not by brutally suppressing or showed weakness, conceding to the striker's demands. This independent move caused a special unpleasant consequence, namely the rising of a small organized opposition movement inside the ANC, currently unable to cripple any of his ongoing reform proposals due to its small size, but Kimmy Thorne and her side have left unchecked. Curry, the embodiment of a nationalist that party core ideas, and beliefs aside from his own, hoped to not resort to any old political vices that attained to many politicians before him. The times, however, are they are a change, and different times require less idealistic and more pragmatic methods. Especially in the wild political arena, a list of malleable politicians plus adequate doses of blackmailing, sin, sin, sin cures, cronyism, boondoggles, uh, bribes, some physical convincing of the most recalcitrant ones, and other special measures. All that done in the most discreet manner possible, ensuring a congressional ship goes steady under careful steering, approving the government agenda. Maybe it's time for dirtier measures. And we like them dirty. Newly made equipment, nice. Uh, that time my son needs to be changed, I guess. Just because, uh, Carlos Prestes. Oh. Oh, that's kind of cool. Because this is all, like, 1930s tech, so. The Night of Hope Rises. Odd. Okay. So, if eight. Well, I could use more technology, I suppose. Alright, buy all that stuff. Leaders in the army? Sure, why not? Um, trains? Why not? Yeah, how much does it cost for this? 100 or 200? Unlocked with XP. Well, how much XP do we need? That is the real question. Can I actually replace them? Daily arm XP. Well, I, don't want more. I prefer more arm XP than anything else right now, but still. The first Katukina Regiment. As the sun rose high above the faraway tree and tops, it came with the sound of martial trumpets, announcing its arrival. Waking the newly arrived soldiers, waking up early wasn't the problem. Rising when the sun was part of the routine since, well, ever. It was a group of alien, alienists of army life that made their hearts much colder. The metal bunk beds, green cloth uniforms, eating and sleeping side by side with those that just a generation ago were mortal enemies of your tribe and clan. With swords back it up. Seeing them in formation by your side and realizing that deep down, maybe they never were so different from you. Nonetheless, those were welcome heartaches by the tribal volunteers. Before the morning light turned into a scorching sun, the men lined up on the patio presenting themselves to the commanding officer, uh, Captain uh, Mateus Satawana, Satanawa, who then briefed the troops first in Portuguese and in Pano. The speech wasn't glorious, nor was it long. Satanawa, Satanawa was no pope, but he got the point across. While wearing that uniform, they ceased to be just Varnawa. Kamanawa, Nayanwa, Wanenawa, Satanawa, or Numananawa. They were Acrian, just as much as their newfound white brethren in the barracks or their families back in the home villages fighting under one banner for one goal. To sure that the toil or toil and strength that the parents left through does not repeat itself. Before moving on to their daily activities, the corporal called for his men again and they were proudly answered Regimento Katukina. Passing the Native Protection Act. Um uh, okay. Release political power, get more non or manpower, more stability. All right, well, it's a, you know, it's a trade-off. We'll see what happens. Give them a voice, a voice, not vice, but voice. Okay. The Funa. Ooh, it's not bad for planes. Railroad to heaven. I'll do railroad to heaven first. I want more steel. How much rubber do we have left? We got plenty of rubber. Okay. Well. Oh. Okay. Production is not bad. You get plus 0.5 air XP every day. Um, I just prefer like getting just fighter twos. Fighter twos. You just get plenty of planes. That'd be very nice, actually. You start training them. Oh, we have no manpower. That's right. God dang it. How do we get more men? Proposal 24, the war train. By Jose Guillermo de Santos, command of the Red Frontier Battalion. Briefing after collecting and examining reports from extra-official incursions, frontier patrols, and expatriates coming from the former territory of Rondonia, not under the control of the EARM, I've come to the conclusion that Shea's hold on the north of the territory, specifically in the area encompassing Porto Velo, is exceptionally weak when compared to the Bolivian holdings. In short, Shea controls Rondonia only nominally, keeping his grasp on the territory by intimidation of the resi residual populace and the promise of the reprisal in case of rebellion. Nevertheless, we cannot disregard the possibility of greater military presence in the south, where clashes between Xi and the Brazilian military junta have been reported. One particular incursion into Rondonia reported that large stretches of the Madeira Mamore 
railroad remained active on a small scale, operated and maintained by the civilian populace for everyday needs, by taking in the team maintained by the civilian populace for everyday needs. Oh, by taking the team reached as far as Porto Vallejo before retreating and encountering no opposition. The RN appears to be unaware or indifferent to the railroad's existence or operational status. Uh, DP-24 proposes a covert operation to connect Acre's existing railroad network to the Madeira Memora, providing direct access to Porto Vallejo and Guajaraz Mirem. Depending on the success of the operation, the network could be expanded as far as River Alta. Other rescues could provide us direct access to the behind enemy lines, causing major disruptions of their front line during an invasion attempt of Acre, as well as an excellent support for infantry if we were to ever step foot in Rondonia. Details on the estimate cost provided in the annex. Proposal advanced. Oh, do we run out of things to build? I mean, if we have to if we have to build roads, I mean, there's no point to really build these roads, but we can if we need to. I just feel like it, so. Um, in the meantime, build more civvies. Oh, okay, no, never mind. Okay, yeah, build some more civvies. Okay, build more movies. And when you're done with that, just build. Just build. Like, I'm not sure what else we're supposed to do down here, so. A lot of buildings. Um, you put a radar station or radar disher everywhere. I don't care. There you go. Bring electricity to Acre? Nice. Holy crap, what the heck happened? Oh my goodness. Sure, why not? How much rubber do we have still? 68. So oil and ammo. 13. 5 high technology. 13 ammo. 13 ammos. Alright. Oh, look at this. Dream big. Okay. 13 ammos. 13 ammos. Oh, so we need more manpower then. Our mercenary company from these people. Okay, be a little more manpower. We can do it like that maybe. Venezuelan guns, equipment. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, well, I guess fortunate sons. Three months, okay. Oh, manpower. Oh, the time ends. Oh. Okay. Um, oh, the forgotten Prasinan? Prasinhas. Okay, why not? We get enough steel for now too, so I guess we'll see. Native divisions, actual infs. You know, if we can, that'd be good. Defend Acres Little Princess, I guess. And we'll end with Zapuri Acres Pride. So, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know what your thoughts on this mod are in the demo so far. And I'll see you tomorrow as we continue figuring out what the heck we're going to do as a republic or acre republic. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.